let your glory fill this house. Let your power fill this house. We thank you, dear God. Thank you for bringing us thus far in this year. And as we go into the season of celebrating your word, God, we give you glory for you alone are worthy. Come on, clap your hands all over the sanctuary and give him praise this morning. Come on, let's sing one more time. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth and give him glory. Open up your mouth and give him glory. If he's great in your life, if he's wonderful in your life. Hallelujah, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. God is great. And he's greatly to be praised. God is great in my soul. Come on, clap your hands this morning. Let's have a little church this morning. greatly to be praised. God is great in my soul. God is great. He's greatly to be praised. God is great in my soul. Say God is great. He's great. Say God is great. 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 You in the house this morning. Come on, look on the other side and say, Name, I'm glad to see you in the house. And tell him God is great in my soul. Say, God is great. God is great. He's great. He's great. great. Opening selection by our praise team was certainly appropriate. God is great. God is great. He's great in my soul. We bless the Lord and thank Him 
for His greatness. In the midst of all that's going on, God is still great. Hallelujah. How many can see that today? God is great. And He's greatly to be praised. We bless Him and thank Him for another day. In this time of year when all hearts and minds turn towards Him and the, the great incarnation of our Lord and our God, Hallelujah, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we continue in worship and praise unto God, with our prayer, we ask that you would stand at this time as we prepare to go before the Lord in prayer. And Elder Anthony Harris will come to lead us in prayer. And following the prayer, we'll have Minister Samuel Shadundi, who will do our scripture in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in that order. Elder Harris, at this time, our prayer selection. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for allowing us to be here in the land of the living. Another time to praise you, another time to glorify you, to magnify you, to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We couldn't have been here without you. We thank thee that you allow us to have traveling mercies. We thank you for allowing us to have a right state of mind and a peace of mind. We thank you for giving us the heart that pumps blood so we can be here to worship you, Lord. You are mighty, mighty good, Lord. We are so thankful to you. We don't take it any little measure that we are here today because only by your grace we are here today. We thank you. We pray, Father God, that you touch, Father God, our assistant pastor, Bishop Wilkins Jr., Father God, as he brings forth the word. Touch our pastor, Charles E. Wright Sr. Touch him, touch him. Touch the saints, touch the securities, touch the ushers, touch all the ministers, the elders, the missionaries. Father God, touch us all. We need a word from heaven today. We need a word from heaven. We need some chains to be broke. We need some strongholds to be brought down. We need it, Lord. We need it. We're asking you today because we can't go to nobody else but you, Lord. You can make it happen. We're thankful to you. We're praising you. We're worshiping you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One more time. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, everyone. Sorry that I took a little time getting up here. Thank God for the prayers. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Psalm, Psalm of David, chapter 85. I want us to read and respond in Jesus' name. Is that all right? Psalm 85, 1 to the end. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast taken away all thy right. Thou hast turned thyself from the fairness of thy anger. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou 
draw out thy anger to all generations. Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Surely, his salvation is near, near them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Let's read 13 together. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. May the Lord add blessings to the reading of his holy word and sanctifying our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. How many of us have come to worship God today? How many of us came to give him the glory and the honor that he's due? Can we say this together, Lord, we've come to honor you. Lord, we've come to worship you. Lord, we've come to give you the praise because you are worthy of it. You're the savior of the world. Amen. You're glorified. Be honored, oh God. Hallelujah.
the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. We bless and thank him for all that he has been, all that he is to us now and what he shall be. Today as we look around us and we see oh so many with their red and other colors, colors of Christmas, it might sound cliche to say it, but Jesus is the reason for the season, right? We're here because of him. And the promise of God 
Way back in the Garden of Eden, at the seat of the woman where bruised the head of the serpent. And about 2,000 years ago, our Lord Jesus Christ came into our world. And we thank God for the gift of life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We thank God for the gift of life. That's what Christmas is all about, life. Life that came from God, uh, the great expression of the love of God as the angels on that night hung their choir loft in glory in the heavens and say glory to God in the highest on earth peace goodwill toward men unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord that's what it's all about all other things are nice but there's nothing like the gift of life having the baptism in the Holy Spirit the life of God in us today we shout glory to God in the highest on earth. God's intent is peace, not the wars that we have. But one day in the very near future, our God will cause everything to cease. Hallelujah. As the great angel is going to stand one foot upon the earth and one foot upon the sea and cry, there'll be no more time. Time is up. He brought peace to us to enjoy now. Because time is winding up. Let us enjoy the peace of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on this Sunday before Christmas. Celebrate Jesus Christ and don't let anyone stop you from celebrating. We've got some folks around who are super deep and know more than what the truth is all about. You say, you're worshiping a Christmas tree. We don't worship the Christmas tree. If you want one, get one. Nothing wrong with that. And, and he'll try to bring you some scripture from the book of Jeremiah, talking about when the prophet prophesied, and he talked about the tree and how they decorated the tree. Well, they did it for the wrong reasons. That was a pagan, pagan practice back then. It has nothing to do with the Christmas tree that we, some of us have. Uh, Christmas had not happened. They didn't know anything, and it wasn't a prophetic statement. It was a condemnation of a false worship of a tree, as they worship not only trees, but they worship other kinds of things also. Enjoy Jesus Christ. He is the reason for the season. Well, we've got a preacher today. We've got assistant pastor, William Wilkins, Jr., and he's... Uh, He's got on his red and black. He's, he's with it also, right? <laughs> Jesus is the reason for the season. Thank God for the great opportunity that he brought us some years ago. We want to call a few names of the ones that we have who will be celebrating birthdays this month. We have Sister Kathy McWhite, Sister Barbara Williams. And little Maddie Wilkins. Yeah, Maddie. This month. That's the youngest daughter of uh, Bishop and uh, Lady Sarah Wilkins. She's having a birthday also. And Daddy's having one also. He did it for Maddie. And, he, and uh, as he was a Christmas child for Deacon and Sister Missionary Wilkins, some years ago. Sister Janet Davis. Uh, Sister Kiana Adamson. And Sister Maggie Reimer. Those are the ones that we received uh, in the office as people who will be celebrating their birthday this month. It's a good month, great month to have been born in. In the name of our Lord, the month of the birth of our Lord, the incarnation of God Almighty. And by way of announcement, the Church of Christ Bible Institute will have its uh, virtual Christmas service 
on this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. You may uh, join us in worship for this Christmas season on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, other places in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us worship together. Let us praise God together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll be blessed this year with the speaker, Dr. Bishop. Fitzgerald, Dr. Fitzgerald from Ohio. Uh, Dr. Fitzgerald is a bishop, longtime member of the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, pastor and Darcy and bishop out there in Ohio. And Dr. Fitzgerald also is a uh, brain surgeon, Pentecostal preacher, raised in the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, brain surgeon. That's high stuff. That's deep stuff. And he'll be uh, speaking for the Church of Christ Bible Institute at 7 o'clock on this coming Thursday in our virtual Christmas service. Let us get together, praise God together, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we would appreciate if you would like to send an offering to bless the Church of Christ Bible Institute. Send it to the Church of Christ Bible Institute, 2081 Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 1002. To seven, and the Lord will bless you real good. And the Greater Bethesda Temple will have a virtual Christmas service on the 24th, Christmas Eve. That's Saturday, right? God bless you. Seven o'clock. Introduction to the Christmas Day. We have uh, services where we praise and magnify the Lord. Oh, come let us adore him, right? He is Christ the Lord. What a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing to be able to celebrate Jesus Christ and have no problems, no qualms about it. He's worthy to be praised and we're but summoned to worship him by the angels. Hallelujah. Came to the shepherd boys on that night. He didn't uh, come to Caesar's palace with all the finery, but he came out there where the shepherd boys were watching their flocks by night. And sang glory to God. And we praise and magnify the Lord today, 2,000 years later on, because of what Jesus did in our, in our world 2,000 years ago. He came to bring life and happiness in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we bless the Lord for all that he has done for us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank each and every one of you for your prayers. You heard that I might not have been too well last Sunday. Well, last Sunday I was not here. Uh, but the Lord bless me, I'm here today, right? <laughs> Feeling my usual self, whatever that is. <laughs> Thank God for his loving grace and mercy unto us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask your continued prayers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God will bless with uh, continued health, strength, and grace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we continue in worship and praise unto God, we come to our offering time. We ask that each and every one would prepare to give and those who are viewing this service live stream, we ask that you prepare to give also. Giving in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving unto God who has given us so much. God so loved the world. God gave his only begotten son. I quote that scripture often because it's the greatest scripture of all time. Promise of the eternal God. He made to mankind and it came out of his love. We have the love of God expressed through Jesus Christ. Uh, as the song would say, see from his hands, his head and his feet. Sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did ever such love and sorrow meet? Or thorns compose so rich a crown. The expression of the heart of God. You'll see it in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. We thank God for it. We give because of what he gave 
Here in his love, John said, not that we love God, but he loved us first, right? Gave his son to be the propitiation for all sins. Prepare to give in your tithes and your offerings. Giving unto God, who has been so good to us, blessed us, brought us through another week, and we look with great anticipation toward next Sunday, Christmas Day. The only thing that could change that would be the rapture of the church. Hallelujah. And we won't be here if that happens. We'll be there. Hallelujah. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Voice of the archangel in the trump of God. Dead in Christ shall rise first. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We that are dead. Hallelujah. The dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Shall be changed. So whatever happens between now and Sunday is up to God. I bow my heads and I said amen to Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let us prepare to give. If you haven't done so, prepare your offerings, your tithes. You received an envelope from the ushers. Hallelujah. And uh, to those who are watching us, you'd like to give, we ask again that you would give by sending your donations to Greater Refuge Temple, 2081 Adam Clayton Powell, Jr. Boulevard, New York, New York, 10027. Love to bless you real good in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who like to give electronically, you may do so via Givelify, in the name of the Lord. We're good to, good to see Elder Gregory Elliott, former junior pastor here at Greater Refuge, Refuge Temple, and Elder, thank you. Good to see you. You stopped by to see us in the name of the Lord Jesus. And all the Lord's wonderful people, good to see you. As we prepare to give in our tithes and our offerings. Take your envelopes into your hand, your offerings and tithes in your hand as we pray our prayer of consecration. Bow your heads at this time. Oh dear God, we thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your kindness and for your grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us one more day to worship you. Oh, bless now as we give in our tithes and our offerings. We give to say thank you and to bless your word. Bless each and every one who gives. Bless the gift. And Lord, again, bless the giver. We pray and we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our oh Lord. Amen. And amen. Our ushers will serve at this time. Please drop your offerings in the baskets and your tithes.
Thank you for giving again. May the Lord bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as you support us. Work. I mentioned the, the funeral on Tuesday at 10 o'clock was Stephanie Terry's daughter that passed away. Stephanie Terry's daughter passed away. We ask your prayers for Sister Terry and for the family. It's Tuesday, 10 o'clock. 9 to 10 will be the viewing for um, Stephanie's daughter in the name of the Lord here at Refuge Temple. God bless each and every one of you as we continue in worship and praise unto God. Our praise team will come to bless us and we want to thank God for the praise team. Give the praise team an applause. And the musicians also. God bless each and every one of you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. And following the praise team, of course, all dressed up and ready in his black and red. Bishop William Wilkins, Jr., our speaker. Can you clap your hands with us this morning? Come on, clap your hands.
waiting that he kept me. He kept me. He kept me. Hallelujah. If I just think back about this year alone, God has been merciful and he's been kind. So I owe him for something. Come on, open up your mouth, refuge. say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the hands of the enemy. Any redeemed folks in the house? Anybody in here, oh God, of praise? If the devil would have had his way in 2022, he would have took you out of here. But there's about 10 people in here that, oh God of praise. About 10 people in here that know you shouldn't be here. And because you're here, you ought to give them the best praise you got. Oh yes, Lord. I owe God this. I owe God this. I owe God this. I owe. I owe the praise. Oh yes, Lord. I owe him the praise. Yes, Lord. I owe it to him. Yes, yes, I owe him the praise. I owe him the praise. Oh, yes. 
you. There are few of you in here that in 2022 the doctors gave you an unfavorable report. Said they had to do more tests. But look at what God has done. You called on the name of Jesus and because the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in therein and they are safe. God turned it around for you. Anybody in here God turned it around Anybody in here can say God turned it around for me? Lord, have mercy. Oh, yes, Lord. You may not be able to put your feet up and down, but you can certainly wave your hand. Would you just look at somebody and say, he turned it around for me. You may not be able to jump like you used to. You may not be able to run like you used to. May get tired pretty quick, but you can you can give God a wave and just say, I, he turned it around for me. Yeah! Yes, he did. The whole thing was a mess, but he, he turned it around for me. He turned it around for me. All right. We better leave this alone. But I praise and thank God he turned it around for me. He turned the whole thing around. I still don't know how he did it, but he turned it around for me. They wanted to put you out of your apartment, but he turned it around for me. They tried to get rid of you on your job, but God, I promise you I'm going to leave it alone. I don't want you to open up your mouth. I just want you to look at somebody and do like this. That, that, that's a signal. Go to work tomorrow and just do like this. Just let them know God turned it around. God turned it around. God turned it around for me. Just this, this he. I don't know how he did. Still blow my mind, but he. Whew, don't know how it happened. think about it, all I can do is just shake my head and just yeah, you had to go through chemo, but God
You were depressed in 2022, but God turned it around. with my time. Thank God for Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Give God a praise in the house. Oh, yes, Lord. Woo. Yes, Lord. God bless your praise team. Just. Don't, don't know when it happened, but just don't know when God healed my body just woke up one morning and just things just don't know when the pain left just one morning woke up and yes Lord can't praise God like this and what amazes me is that you have some that can't stop praising him and then you have some that just won't praise him let me tell you something beloved of God whatever you lose don't lose your praise <laughs> I said refuge temple whatever you lose don't use your praise Listen, if you need knee replacement, if you need a hip replacement, if you need a, if you got arthritis and can't move like you used to, amen, wave your hand, do something, but don't lose your praise. Don't, don't, don't lose that. You, 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 you're treading on, amen, dangerous territories. Because if these would hold the peace, the very rocks would cry out, I've come to tell you, don't lose that. Certainly, we magnify and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for all that God has done and all he continues to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. We love you and we adore you, Father. God, we thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do in our lives. Now, Father, we ask you to please forgive us for our sins. Anything we may have said or did or thought that was not pleasing in your sight, God, we ask you to forgive us and count us worthy to escape. Bind anything right now that would hinder the preacher or the hearer. God, we ask now that your presence would oversaturate our atmosphere, God. God, we ask now that you would speak a word of life. Do something unusual in the house on this morning. Lord God, save someone fill someone with the gift of the Holy Spirit God. Lord God let someone come to the point of repentance in the name of Jesus Christ for your glory for your honor and for your praise God if there are many sick among us we ask right now 
that you would heal by your power and by your grace through Jesus Christ our Lord and all of God's people said amen and amen. Certainly we do honor the spirit of God that is here with us on today. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise. I don't, I don't take it for granted that God shows up at Refuge Temple because there's a lot of folks having church on this morning and God is nowhere in the building. But the Bible declares that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. And we praise and thank God for the liberty that we feel, the freedom that we feel to worship and to magnify the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And certainly we do salute our pastor, our shepherd, our leader. Come on, let's give God a praise on this morning. For a wonderful pastor, wonderful man of God, who God has called and continues to use. Amen. We praise and thank God for his example, inspiration to us all. Amen. And we praise and thank God for him and to Mother Wright. We praise and thank God for you, Mother. Amen. And certainly to my lovely wife, we praise and thank God for you and all of the ministers and elders, our missionary president, missionary Janice Johnson, and we praise and thank God for the mother's board, the deacons, and all of God's people, we say praise the Lord. We're so happy on this morning to see the delegation that went to Africa. Amen. They're back with us on this morning, safe and sound. Amen. Okay. Elder uh, Elliot and Sister Gwen Gaynor and so many of the others, I believe Sister Melody, a group of you went, amen. We praise and thank God for all of you. I don't want to leave anyone out, but all of you who went to Africa, would you stand just so that we, you know, when you start calling names, and it get you in trouble. So we just want to praise and thank God. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. They went on a mission trip there, and the Lord met them in a wonderful way in the name of Jesus Christ, and we praise and thank God for them. At this time, open your Bibles with us to the gospel according to Luke chapter number two. Beginning at verse number eight, it reads on this wise, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Lo, the angel of the Lord came down upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto, uh, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And uh, this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the, mult, uh, the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into the heaven, the shepherds said one to the other, let us now go even unto Jerusalem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste. And found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when uh, they had seen it, they 
they made it known abroad the saying which is told them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. I want to also go to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 9. Beginning at verse number 6. For unto us a child is born. To us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. I want to lift up verse number 10. And chapter number two of Luke. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. I want to use for a thought on this morning, if you will, Jesus brings joy to the world. Jesus brings joy to the world. And there's a subtitle I'd like to use for a thought. <clears throat> the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I was uh, traveling. Uh, seems like I've been traveling a lot lately, but Amen. Uh, two weeks ago, or a week ago or so, I was traveling home from the uh, homegoing celebration of our brother in Christ, former chairman of the Board of Bishops, David Maxwell. Heart was a bit heavy, and must admit, uh, for many of us, that moment was an emotional roller coaster. Uh, not because of anything other than the price you pay for love is hurt. If you're going to love anyone, when they leave, it does hurt. So I was at the airport on my way back home man had a connecting flight uh, and so I was at the airport and a gentleman, very nice gentleman, began to strike a conversation with me. And I must be honest with you, when I travel, I put my ear pods in and most of the time I don't want to be bothered. Use that time to listen to music and to perhaps, amen, uh, listen to something or, uh, or perhaps sometimes I even bring a book and study and do other things. Uh, but this man was just so persistent. He, he wanted to talk about it. it seemed like everything <laughs> under the sun. Man, and I was trying to end the conversation, uh, but this gentleman just seemed to go on and on. 
And as I boarded the plane, I said, well, finally, I'm rid of this man. When I got on the plane, I saw him walking toward my seat. I said, Lord, don't let this man be in my seat. Uh, but the Lord would have it so that the man would sit right next to me. I thought to myself, there goes my nap. But this gentleman talked to me about all sorts of different things, and it seemed like, amen, he was riddled with all sorts of different things. And then uh, he asked me, what did I do for a profession? I told him I'm a minister, and, uh, and he began to share some of the things that he was going through. And many of the things that he had been going through have been tremendously challenging to him. And I said to him, well, uh, Christmas is coming, and I hope and pray that you have at least a good Christmas. And he said to me, sir, I don't think so. I, I've, I, I, I've lost so much. I lost my wife this year. Amen. I, 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 I've, I've not been right since. Uh, my children don't stay in contact with me. Uh, I, I've been through so much. And he asked me, how do I have a Merry Christmas when so much has happened? How, how can I still smile when I have experienced so much pain? I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that on this morning because uh, I am, and those of you who know, you know, that's why I was, amen, about to pick Bishop right up and put him on my shoulders when he was talking about Christmas, amen, uh, because I think it's so true and relevant. Uh, there, there, you know, for me, Christmas is a jolly time. It always has been. I've, I've always enjoyed Christmas. But the thing, the reality that hit me, Missionary Johnson, was that just because it's a Merry Christmas for me, doesn't mean it's a Merry Christmas for everyone else. Just because I whipped out my Christmas lights and put up my beautiful Christmas tree, doesn't mean that everyone has the same sentiment. Doesn't mean that everyone feels the joy of true Christmas. And so the, 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 the reality of it is, is that with so much that has happened around us, how can this be a Merry Christmas for some? Well, when you think about this year, I don't know about you, but it seems like death has been all around us. Every time you turn around, it seems like someone has gone. I'll make you laugh a little bit. I was talking to my good friend, Bishop Reginald Davis, the other day, and he was telling me about someone who passed away, and he said, it seemed like all of our friends are dying. And I said, well, here's the end of our friendship right now. <laughs> if all your friends are dying, then we can't be friends. But it is, it is true. Seems like every time you turn around, someone has died. Seems like, amen, uh, death has, amen, uh, invaded us tremendously. It is true, and we can see it, that it is certainly a changing of the gods. That, that. Uh, generations is not just generations because the young are dying just as much as the old. But death is all around us. It is, it is true that we can see that the coming of the Lord is near. How can this be a merry Christmas? How can this be a happy Christmas? How can this be a joyful season? When crime seems to be on the rise. How can it be when uh, uh, it seems as if when you can't even walk down the street and feel safe? 
Man, people are afraid to ride the buses and the trains and the, amen, to drive their cars. Man, folks have made up in their minds, listen, I'm not going to uh, ride the buses and the trains any longer. I'm going to drive my car because it seems safer. But the other day on the Major Deacon, a man was shot in his own car. Man, seem to be some bit of road rage. Trouble is all around us. Man, but yet, we're expected to say Merry Christmas or have this be a joyful time of the year. So many other things are happening on, uh, around us. There is a pandemic, man, that we have seen that has uh, crippled our nation. Now the flu and RSV seems to also be attacking us. The economy is raging. Credit card interest has gone up to as high as 21 to 22 percent. People can't afford to do many of the things that they used to do. But the good news is that Jesus is still Lord. My conversation with uh, this man, I, I, the only thing that I could do was to talk to him about Jesus. Because I am convinced that Jesus makes the difference. That Jesus is a game changer. That, that a life in Jesus Christ is a good life. And even when it comes to death, we sorrow not as those who have no hope. We have a hope even in death that one day, as our pastor said on this morning, the dead in Christ will raise first and we that are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. I like that last part. And so shall we ever, <laughs> oh glory be to God, be with the Lord. That's good news on this morning. Man, scripture text takes us to uh, the death, uh, uh, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. In order to really understand and appreciate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, you must first put it in proper context. Because there had been over 300 prophecies about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So... Man talked about not only the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but the suffering of our Christ. Look at Isaiah chapter number 7, verse number 14. It says, therefore the Lord himself shall give you sign, a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. For unto us a child is born and a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter number 9, of his uh, increase, of his government and his peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and uh, his kingdom to the uh, to order it and establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth and forever. Isaiah chapter number 53, uh, beginning at verse number 4, says, Surely he hath bore our grief and carried our sorrow, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. All of this prophecy has gone forth. 
But to put it in its proper context, you need to understand what is happening before the Lord comes. That from Malachi, from the book of Malachi to the book of Matthew, uh, we believe that there's about 400 years where there is no uh, record of Jesus, of God saying anything. 400 years of silence. 400 years where people are looking for a word, but God is silent. 400 years where, where uh, uh, people are, are feeling the crunch. Or to understand this, you need to understand that, remember, God's people were taken uh, uh, into uh, captivity by the Babylonians. And so they go through that season, and now they are released. But when they get back to their land, now everything has changed. They're, they're, you, know, uh, you know, life changes can take you on a roller coaster. Most of us don't want things to change. We want things to be the way that they are. But I've come to tell you today that life will change. You will change. Life can be a roller coaster. Man, the things that you used to enjoy, you don't enjoy those things anymore. Not because they aren't enjoyable, but just simply because you've changed. Man, and if you don't change, change will change you. I'll say that again. If you don't change, <laughs> change will change you. You don't believe me, just keep on living. Change will change you. So uh, these 400 years now, everything they come, uh, and now the Roman Empire has taken over everything. The freedoms that they had, the temple that they worshipped in, everything that was dear to them, this, the, the new rebuilt temple, everything has now changed. Now that everything has changed, what are they to do? Because uh, uh, they're now oppressed by the Roman Empire. Here it is, God's people. God's select people. God's called out ones. God's children, the children of Israel, the one that God had delivered and done so much for. Now those freedoms no longer exist. They are now being oppressed by the Roman Empire. And because of this oppression, you can imagine that oppression will depress you. I'll say that again. Oppression can depress you. That, 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 that's why you've got to live in, the, live in the liberty of Jesus Christ. Because oppression can depress you. So now they're living under this, this, this strain and, 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 and no good news and, and now uh, being pushed around by, amen, the Roman Empire through the order of Caesar and, and amen. And now we see where they are. Herod is in rule and he is treacherous. He is a bully. Uh, some of you may not like this, but a lot like Donald Trump, if you will. You know, where you just, no matter, amen, my right is right, and that's it. And the most important challenge that they had was that he wanted to remain king because he was insecure about his kingship. Because, amen, uh, he was not, amen, uh, what some would say an authentic king because of his heritage and genealogy. But now word has been given that there is a new king that will be risen, uh, that will be born out of the line of David. And so he, he, he asks his wise men, he says to them, uh, he says, tell me what the scriptures say about the coming 
of this new king. They look at it and say, well, amen, all signs point to the fact that a king shall be born. And just like any, amen, brutal king, his desire now is I've got to get rid of him before he grows in stature. Well, this wouldn't be new. We've seen this before, amen, uh, with uh, 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 Pharaoh and the children of God. You remember when he said, we've got to kill them before they multiply and grow. So now all roads lead to killing Jesus. Don't let him become strong. Don't let him live on purpose. The Bible says now after 400 years, we now hear that a word comes from God. What is the word that we hear from God? Well, in chapter number one, the Bible tells us, amen, that an angel of the Lord appears on to a woman by Mary, named Mary. I come to tell you that God does talk to our women folks. Y'all didn't hear anything. I guess the mic is off, maybe. God, 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 God spoke to Mary. God chose this devout woman of God, amen, and said, uh, sent an angel and said, be it unto me. And eventually, this is what Mary would say, but, but she said to her, amen, that you are born, uh, you are pregnant with a child. You know the story. Now, 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 I must be honest with you, I would have struggled with this if I was Joseph as well. Here it is, Mary is staying with her cousin, Elizabeth, and then she comes back and says, I'm six months pregnant. And you've never been with her. It was a hard pill for him to swallow. Bible says, amen, that Joseph got a word from the Lord. It is, it's important, beloved of God, that we hear from God. Man, it's important that we hear from God. You know, you know, there's so much happening around us, so many things that are around us to kill our joy. So many things around us that the enemy puts around us to steal our joy, to steal, amen, the very essence of who God is in our lives. When we think about this word joy, amen, from a, a, a Webster dictionary uh, perspective, listen to this. It, it, it reads this wise. It says, the emotion invoked by well-being or success. That, 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 that is what uh, uh, joy is defined of in Webster. But, but, but Webster doesn't do the good job of, of really understanding what joy is. So you'll never be able to interpret the word of God through Webster. Are you listening to me? It's the scriptures that interpret scripture. From a biblical perspective, when you look up the word joy, amen, in the Greek comes from a word uh, carrier. Uh, uh, and this word, uh, uh, is, it, it speaks to us about an, 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 inner, an, an inner feeling of true, amen, gladness. It is deep-seated. It's, it's a deep-seated pleasure that is not dictated by circumstance. I, I, I need you to get this because joy is not, hey man, a result of things happening. Joy is deep-seated. It is, it, 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 it is way down in the, 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 the heart of, of a man or a woman. It is deep-seated. It's a seat of, of well-being and confidence in God. It, it has nothing to do with happiness. You know, uh, it was... Charles Spurgeon, I believe, who said, happiness happens, but joy abides. I'll say that again. Happiness happens. In other words, something must happen in order for one to be happy. 
but joy abides. What does that simply mean? That even if nothing is happening, I've got joy on the inside. Ah, yes, Lord. Joy, amen, joy remains while happiness fades. Joy is in the heart while happiness is in the face. Joy is in the soul while happiness is in the moment. Joy responds, but happiness uh, reacts. Joy runs deep and overflows while happiness comes and goes. I, I need you to get this because, because this is the context in which you need to understand that Jesus was born under. No word, nothing. We haven't heard anything. And now we see in verse number 10 of chapter number 2, it says, An angel said unto them, Fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. What shall be to all people? Listen to this in the New Living Translation. It says, but an angel reassured them, don't be afraid. I will bring you good news. That will bring you great joy. Not just to you, but to everyone. The first thing we need to do, amen, is understand why one would have joy and nothing has happened yet. It says, be of joy. First thing that we understand in verse number 10 is the first part, the A clause of verse number 10. It says, and the angel of the Lord said unto them. Well, why should they have joy? It's because they had a word from God. I've come to tell you today that you can have joy when you've got a word from God. Oh, yes, Lord. It may not be manifested yet, but I praise and thank God that if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. I've come to tell you that you can have joy in your heart just simply because I've got a word from God. When... When you've got a word from God, you don't have to worry about, oh, amen, everything else that is going around you. When you've got a word from God, you can be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and not be moved because I've got a word from the Lord. Psalms 91 and 8 says, and only with thine eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou have made the Lord thy uh, have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even my most high, thy inhabitations. Uh, therefore shall no evil, neither shall there be any plague nigh thee. Why? Because verse number one says, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. What are you saying, Bishop Wilkins? Amen. The angel of the Lord, the presence of the Lord means something in the life of the child of God. I don't know about you, but I praise and thank God for the presence of God. I praise and thank God that even when I messed up, even when I didn't do the right thing, I thank and praise God for the presence of God that is in the life of the child of God. Amen. Not only just his presence, he will send his angels and they'll be all around you. I praise and thank God that Psalms 23 and 6 says, Surely, and goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to know you've got angels all around you. I said you've got angels all around you. The only reason you didn't die in the car wreck is because you had angels shielded all around you. Amen. God died on Calvary's cross and put his blood on you. But he put his angels all around you. That's why when the folks tried to mug you, it didn't work. That's why when people tried to, amen, uh, steal your joy, it didn't work because the angels of the Lord, amen, are encamped all around you. Amen. I praise and thank God that I would have been dead and gone, but it was the power and the presence of God that makes the difference in my life. Yeah. 
verse number 10, amen, he, 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 he wants them to understand that even though it's been a dark time, man, the presence and the power of God is going to change everything. He says unto them, he says, the angel of the Lord said unto them, listen to the B clause of this, fear not. Man, fear not. You know, when you have God on your side, you don't have to fear. Amen. That's why David picked up his parchments and said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Amen. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came up upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not uh, shall not fear the war shall rise up against me in this will I be confident one thing uh, I feel like preaching y'all have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple listen to verse number 5 one of my favorite verses in this text it says for in the time of trouble In the time of trouble. He shall hide me. I don't have to fear. Because in the time of trouble, God's got my back. I don't care what the doctors are saying. I don't care what the lawyers are saying. I don't care what the people on your job is saying. If God be for us. says to them, fear not. Amen. Fear, fear not. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't worry about anything. Fear not. Amen. Don't be afraid of what the enemy will do to you. That's why 2 Timothy chapter number, amen, 1 and 7 says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear but of love and of power and of sound mind. I've come to tell you if God hasn't given it to you, then where did it come from? If there's only two forces, good and evil, if there are only two forces, God and the enemy, and the Bible declares that God has not given us the spirit of fear, then that means the fear comes from the enemy. And I've come to tell the devil on this morning, you can take your fear back. You can have it back because, amen, I've got the blood of Jesus Christ all around me. And I'm not going to be afraid, amen, of what's happening around me. I don't care, amen, if they're shooting all around me. No bullets will come on me. None of it will come on my children. None of it will happen around me. Why? Because I don't fear. Because God has not given me. The spirit of fear. But a power, love, and a sound mouth. The angel said unto them, fear not. I know it's been a long time. I know you've been looking for a word. I know, amen, it's been a long season. But fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings. This word good tidings just simply means I bring you good news. Ah, yeah. I praise and thank God for good news. I must admit some days I, I, I look uh, on uh, CNN, if you will, or ABC News. And if you keep looking at the news, it'll make you hide under the bed and never want to come out again. But wow, the enemy has all of this other stuff happening. I praise and thank God for the good news. Hallelujah, that's why every now and then you got to turn off your television and pick up your B-I-B-L-E because the Bible gives me good news. I want somebody in here to know that you've got good news on this morning. What is the good news? Jesus Christ has been born. And because Jesus Christ is born, Amen. Uh, I don't care what the circumstances are around me. 
I don't care, amen, uh, what is happening all around in my community. I don't care what's happening, amen, in the White House or the crack house. I know that if God be for me, who can be against me? I wish y'all would pray for me while I preach here. I want you to know on this morning that the devil wants you to be afraid, but, but because Jesus Christ is Lord and because he was born, I can be happy on this morning, but not just be happy. I can go beyond my happiness. Ah, yes, Lord, I can go beyond my happiness on this morning. Glory be to God, I can, I can even have joy on the inside. <laughs> yes, Lord, I can have joy on the inside. Um, hallelujah, when, when all hell is breaking loose, uh, hallelujah, and it seems like there's nothing to smile about, uh, I've got joy on the inside. Uh, how did you get joy, Bishop Wilkins? Uh, because Jesus Christ is born. Uh, and because Jesus uh, is the best thing that ever happened to me, uh, I've got joy uh, in sorrow. Uh, I've got peace on the inside uh, because God has declared uh, that he would keep my mind uh, in perfect peace uh, if it stays on him. Uh, and I know on this morning uh, that there's some of you uh, who sit around like the Scrooge uh, and say, bah -hub, bah -hub. Uh, glory be to God. Uh, and I don't have anything to smile about, uh, but I come to tell you uh, I'm not celebrating Santa Claus. Uh, I'm not celebrating a tree. Uh, I'm not celebrating my nice lights, uh, but I'm celebrating uh, that Jesus Christ was born. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, unto us uh, a son is given uh, and a child is born. Uh, and the government, uh, I come to tell you, uh, I don't care uh, what President Biden is doing. Uh, I don't care uh, what Kamala Harris is doing. Uh, I don't care uh, what Rocket Man is doing. Uh, I don't care uh, what Putin is doing. Uh, but what I do care about uh, is that one day uh, the Lord will crack the sky uh, and I want to hear uh, the Lord say well done. Uh, and so while uh, you are sitting around uh, feeling depressed, uh, I've come to tell you on the day uh, that if there's nothing to smile about, uh, smile this morning. Uh, get the joy on the inside because Jesus was born. Great joy the Bible declares over 300 times in the word of God the word joy comes up. It's a reoccurring theme because it is an expectation that the true child of God will have joy. As a matter of fact a part of the fruit of the spirit uh, declares unto us uh, that God uh, will give us joy uh, and I come to tell you today uh, if you don't have any joy uh, you've got to praise your way uh, until you feel the joy of the Lord uh, returning into your life uh, you've got to find a way uh, to make up in your mind uh, like Psalms with the 34 and 1 uh, it declares I will Bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Beloved of God, Jesus was born in the middle of your belly you will begin to feel the joy and the presence of God dwelling within you don't settle for depression don't settle amen uh, 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 for being heavy why? Jesus Christ is born this should be a happy and joyous time for the people of God
This is not about Santa Claus. This is not about the reindeer or the elves. This is about Jesus Christ. And as our pastor said earlier, Jesus is the reason for the season. A baby was born. A God child was born. I praise and thank God for the life that Jesus Christ brought to me. I thank God that there is life in Jesus Christ. And so I refuse to sit around and look at all the things that I lost because there have been many. But I rather focus on the fact that Jesus Christ was born. Not only was he was born, he was crucified. Not only was he crucified, amen, he was buried in the grave. But early on Sunday morning, he got up from the grave with all power in his hand. And we've got something to rejoice about. I said we've got something to be joyful about. We've got something to be happy about, even in the midst of a dark and blue moment. I don't care who you are today, man, woman, boy, or girl. I challenge you today, go beyond your feelings and dig deep into your soul and feel the joy and the presence of God because it makes the, lot, the, the difference in the life of the true child of God. We've got joy. Jesus brings joy. Jesus brings joy to the world and to your life. Are you here today and you don't have the joy of the Lord? Perhaps you've not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. I challenge you right now to come from wherever you are. Come to the altar. Amen. Make up in your mind that I want to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Perhaps you're heavy. Perhaps you are, amen, not feeling the joy that you should be feeling in your life. Remember today and every day we celebrate the joy of the Lord that is in our lives. Come on. Come on, man, woman, boy, or girl. Leave from where you are. You want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps you are sick in your body and you need to be healed. The Bible says to call on the elders of the church and they will pray, pray the prayer of faith. The Lord himself, he will do the healing. If you need to be healed in your body, if you're challenged, come on, come on, leave from where you are and come to Jesus Christ. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, that's right. Come on, make up in your mind. I need you in my life. I need that joy that Bishop Wilkins is talking about. I don't have it. There's joy in Jesus Christ. There is joy in Jesus Christ. There's such joy in serving the Lord. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. That's right. Come on down from the balcony. Come on, come on. If you want to be baptized in the name Lord Jesus Christ, if you have repented of your sins and you want to be baptized in water, we've got water, we've got clothes. You can be serious about your commitment today by giving your life to Jesus Christ. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's right. Come on. Don't leave the way you came. Come on. Come on. That's right. Come on. There's joy in Jesus. There's joy in Jesus. Come on. Oh, Jesus. You're the center of my joy. If you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, we've got water. We can baptize you today. 
You don't have to be heavy. You don't have to be bleak. Not in your life because Jesus Christ was born. We've got good news. Good news. Jesus Christ is born. Come, come. That's right. Come on, come on. Yes, come on. When I'm all alone. to know. I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. Come on, come on. Jesus brings joy. He'll bring joy in your life. Don't just settle for happy moments when you can have a life filled with joy. A life with Jesus is a life filled with joy. Come on, come on. That's right. Come on, come on. Come on. All that's good. right come on come on there's still time if you're afraid to come down by yourself just touch the person sitting next to you and ask them will you come down with me come on come on come on you're on the balcony you need to come come on come on make Jesus your choice Let us pray for you that God will bless your life, that God will change your life so that you can have that abiding joy on the inside.
something special for you. Come on, come on. Come on. We still have a few moments. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh yes, Lord. refuge temple your church home bishop charles wright senior your pastor this is your time your opportunity if you have received the gift of the holy spirit or the evidence of speaking in tongues and you want to make refuge temple your church home come on we'll be happy to receive you you need to be covered this is a good church to cover you you need a church home come on You don't have to, don't leave before the benediction. We'll be out momentarily. Don't leave before the benediction if you don't have to leave. There's some babies to be christened. Parents and godparents, prepare yourselves to come. Come down now in the name of Jesus Christ.
I present to you Zion, Sean, Pierre. Everyone raise your hands and lift them towards him and say, Lord, bless Zion. That's, that's a topic all unto itself, man. That's a good topic. Yeah. Lord, bless Zion. In Jesus' name, we claim his soul for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And this is a young lady who grew up here at Refuge Temple and her handsome little son and wonderful husband and her mom. We praise and thank God for them in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Let's give God a praise. All right, buddy. See you later, man. Thank you for being good. God bless you, sir. We have another family.
I present to you Rain Krona. Everyone lift your hands and point it towards Raina and say, Lord, bless Raina. In Jesus' name, we claim her soul. We claim her soul for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together. Elder Douglas's cousin. All right. All right. God bless you, everybody. Stand to your feet at this time. God bless you. So, right after service on the patio. Elder Douglas is working with the youth department and they're giving out toys to all of the children. And so that means if you have a child here with you, you can get a toy, okay? They can go out and I guess they'll pick out a toy and they're gonna do that on the patio uh, after the service. So just go to the patio. So this is a good day for the children to be in church because they get a toy to go home with. Now, it's it important to know that only if the child is here, all right? Only if the child is here. Is that right? Okay. okay, don't go out this door. Go outside to the patio and you can get, your child can get a toy, okay? So make sure you do that in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen. We are having church next Sunday. Hello, church. I said we are having church next Sunday. So we'll see you all next Sunday in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's give God a praise again for our pastor. Again, we praise and thank God for him. Father, we thank you as we leave this place, but never from your presence. God, we ask now that you go with us. God, help us, Lord God, so that our joy will be fulfilled. In the name of Jesus Christ, give us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, God. Oh, God, we ask right now that you would touch us and keep us until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you in the name of Jesus. Yes, he is good. 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 Yes,